Someone cooking popcorn? Yeah, I'd love some. Thank you. Oh, hi there, wildlife warriors. Welcome to the latest episode of the Conservationist Assemble podcast, the show that collaborates with wildlife advocates worldwide to shed light on conservation challenges. Whether you're a nature expert or new to animal conservation, this podcast is a retreat for your ears. I'm Johnny Bloxham, your host for today's climb into the world of the Binturong. Join special guests Ameline Roger and Alea Del So of AB Conservation in the Philippines as we explore the world of these musty tree dwellers and the obstacles they encounter. Unveil initiatives aimed at their protection and learn how you can champion species survival. Let's give a warm welcome to Ameline and Alea as they guide us on this wild journey of the Conservationist Assemble podcast. Ameline and Alea, uh, welcome to the podcast today. How's it going? Great, thank you. The same, thank you. And you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Uh, I'm thrilled to have you both on the podcast today to, uh, to talk all about Binturong and, and AB conservation. Um, so I guess the logical place to start is, is um, can you tell us about Binturong? Yes, of course. So the Binturong is a mammal with a dark fur. Its name is a bear cat because it looks like a mix of the two species. Binturong are mostly described as small mammals, but they can reach an average uh, of 1.60 meters in length, thanks to a tail which is as long as their body. The tail is really special and really powerful because it serves like a fifth hand. We can call it prehensile, and it's really, really rare in non primate species. This enable the binturong to climb trees very easily, and which is really useful because they live in the canopy of Southeast Asian forests. Uh, also, the binturong is nocturnal, but we don't know more about uh, we don't really know more about the behavior and ecology in wild because most of the knowledge comes from captivity, and we have to learn more about them with our studies. Uh, Binturong also smell uh, like popcorn to mark the territory, so they have a gland uh, that's uh, close to the back part. <laughs> and so they are known as a territorial and solitary species. But so it smell like popcorn instead uh, of stink like uh, other species. So yeah, a lot more research left to do then. Um, so what? role do they play? Do we know what role they play within their ecosystem? Yeah, Binturongs participate in the regeneration of forest, um, of Asian rainforest, because as they feed mostly on fruits and swallow seeds wool, it is suggested that they likely play a key role in, as one of the largest seed dispersers. Amazing. So they're, yeah, they're forest dwellers and, and like you mentioned, the trees are, are very, very tall. Um, but what is, is happening with their habitat? Is their habitat under threat at all? Is that one of the reasons why we're talking about Binturong today? Yeah, of course, um, they are threatened by habitat loss. So deforestation, exploitation. So of course, as the Asian rice forests are, being, uh, are declining, the population is also declining with it. Um, it's one of the main causes of uh, Binturong population decline. Um, yeah. But it's not the only reason because, uh, like uh, all species, they are threatened by, uh, by uh, pollution, climate change, and especially by poaching because uh, they are hunt for their meat, for their fur, but also to be pet inside uh, people's house. So they have really a lot of uh, threat. Yeah, and the species is listed as vulnerable on the IUCN red list of threatened species. But locally, the Binturong is considered as endangered by the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development. So the Palawan um, organization that you just mentioned, that's a more local government, is it, uh, or, or body? Yes, it's a governmental unit 
that uh, is there the one um, uh, giving any research permits or authorization to have uh, um, to study an animal or to use a wild animal for specific studies um, in the governmental unit. And so they also have their own list of classification for threatened species. Okay, so assuming that, that because they are, are the ones who are behind um, giving their own classifications, does that mean that, that AB conservation work closely with the government in terms of, of species survival? Uh, yeah, more or less. Uh, we are involved with the PCSD as we have a research program. We obviously have a research permit that was delivered by the PCSD and that is renewed every year. And then we also work closely with the city where we are based, uh, so the city of Puerto Princesa, and especially uh, the Office of Environmental and Natural Resources. They really help us uh, to, man to obtain authorizations for uh, new study sites uh, and conduct research here in Balawa. Fantastic. So aside from, obviously, the conservation efforts that you are doing uh, and, and the support from the government, what actions need to happen to help improve the chances of survival for Binturong? Maybe you want to start first. <laughs> um, so first, we need to get to know the species because uh, I, as, as I said before, we don't know about their ecology, about their behaviors. So to create a good gestion plan, you have to know them and to know more about the local threats. Uh, um, so to create uh, the gestion plan with the local communities also. Yeah, and I would add that globally or in the a uh, more long-term way, um, the size of the population should be um, accurately estimated in each country of Asia where there is been wrong. And then conservation management plans specifically for the species should be implemented. And the trade in binturongs uh, should also be stricter and better regulated. Uh, law enforcement must be stepped up and of course, rainforests of Southeast Asia have to be preserved from logging. All of that will help uh, improve the chances, chances of survival for the winter run. Fantastic. And so how can everyone, you know, for, for example, people in the UK who, who haven't visited the Philippines and, and might not ever, um, how can everyone get involved with Bintarong conservation? So first, uh, the best way is to talk about binturongs. It's a little known species uh, in Europe. So with more people knowing it, it will be easier to protect it. And so people can also act for the environment, like uh, little action in the daily life, which uh, if everyone does the same, it will have a big impact for the entire biodiversity. Yeah, so what everyone, everyone can do is uh, to stop consuming palm oil-based products. Uh, it's one of the main causes of deforestation here in Palawan and in the Asia in general. So by stopping buying and consuming this type of products, you would start uh, supporting forest conservation. And so preserving the habitat of a number of endangered species, including the winter. Amazing. And and you mentioned briefly earlier that you, you obviously um, there's not a lot known about Binturong. We obviously see them quite regularly now in, in zoos. Um, so is there any support from zoos uh, with Binturong conversa uh, conservation and, and for your organisation? Yeah, our zoological partners and members contribute to the funding of our Bearcat Study Programme. So the Bearcat Study Program, or BSP, is a research program entirely dedicated to improve, uh, to improving knowledge of the ecology and behavior of the Pinturong, as we said. And it was launched by AB Conservation in Palawan in 2016. And so we use camera traps that are uh, that we set directly in the canopy on three branches, 
And we are also about to launch our first radio tracking study of the uh, intern in Palawan. So we are very excited. And so all the firms from zoos, European zoos mostly, um, help us to purchase the necessary scientific equipment and also to pay the salaries of the local team. Amazing. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, so yeah, could you actually tell us a little bit more about AB conservation and, and how it started or kind of its history? First, uh, it was uh, created by uh, Pauline Kaiser. So she was a zookeeper working with binturongs. So, but she, when she wanted to learn about binturongs, she cannot. She just cannot uh, learn anything. So she created all the association and uh, that was really, really impressive what she has did uh, since. So she... It was created in 2014. Yeah. So 2014. We celebrate all 10, day, 10 years now. <laughs> <laughs> and first it was mostly action of uh, sensibilization. So she created also the World Binturong Day. So we've uh, events uh, in uh, several zoological parks, mainly in France, but uh, also in all the world. And in also world. now in the UK, we also have a uh, AB conservation branch in the UK to raise awareness in zoos. Oh, fantastic. So after the creation of the association and of the World Builder on Day, uh, she created the program here in the Philippines to study and improve the knowledge. And we also have raising awareness activities here uh, with universities, school, uh, things like that. And we also have agreement with our local rescue centers so to help to improve the well-being of the animals in the rescue centers and uh, renovate the cages. Yeah. Wonderful. And so, yeah, um, it sounds like the, the organization's really kind of taking off in, in terms of the amount of countries that, that uh, it's operating in. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for, for shedding a light on, on Binturong and, and the background for, of, of AB conservation. Um, so now we're just going to switch track a little bit and, and talk about both of, of your careers and, and how you got to... Uh, to where you are today. So yeah, if you could just tell our listeners a little bit about yourselves and, and give us an insight into to your journeys in your career. Okay. Um, we can start with me. Uh, so I did uh, biology studies and more specifically, I have a degree in ethology, so animal and human behavior. Uh, I did some uh, uh, exchange with uh, an university in uh, Quebec also to learn more about uh, mammalogy, mammalogy, ornithology, ecology. So a lot of uh, diversity among uh, animals. And uh, I did also some internship uh, as a zookeeper, so in farm, but also in zoo and uh, in rescue centers to diversify uh, my skills and my knowledge. And finally, I have some experience uh, also in pedagogy in, uh, to animate and sensibilize uh, about the uh, environment. And maybe you can say what is your position now in AB? So now in AB, I'm the project manager. Uh, that means I uh, do all the administration, I do all the partnership solution, and uh, also the funding uh, research. But I also help in uh, all the programs, so the scientific uh, project, also the renovation of the risk centers, and all the education programs we have in Palawan. <laughs> Uh, about me, so I'm 25 years old. I'm a young wildlife researcher, I would say. Uh, I graduated in 2021 with a master's degree in ethology, so animal behavior and ecology. And I have conducted research on dominance and vocal communication of dominance in puppies. I also studied the spatial temporal patterns of uh, beluga whale habitat use and licking them to high frequency sonar occurrences. 
Then while volunteering for a defense aviation back in France, I worked as a research fellow uh, in another NGO for the protection of birds and habitats. And now since January 2023, so more than one year now, I've been managing the Beckett study program here in the Philippines. And I'm at the very beginning of my research career, but and I've got a lot to learn. I'm glad I'm here today. <laughs> Yeah, so when, when did you both know that you were going to kind of take the move to, to the Philippines and, and that you maybe wanted to get involved with Binturongs? Mm, it's been um, a few years, in fact. So when I discovered AB uh, conservation, uh, I wanted to discover more the, the field studies. And so I didn't know Oh, but I knew I wanted to to work in the Philippines to discover that. So it's been only uh, really a few years, and but I know for I knew for a long time that I wanted to work in conservation. For me, it's quite the same. I always knew I wanted to work to protect animals, and then later in university, I. I realized that I wanted to work in the field of wildlife conservation. I made my way to AB uh, thanks to an internship that I did uh, in the NGO five years ago, where I, it was for my bachelor degree. I came to the Philippines to assist the current researcher at this time. And so I fell in love with the Bintero, with the NGO, and with the island. And when I had to go back to France, I told myself that I will come back one day and here I am. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so yeah, what do typical days look like for you? For me, it's a lot of uh, computer. I'm uh, always doing the administration, uh, so sending emails to partners, uh, trying to find fundings. Uh, so, yes, I'm, uh, most, uh, most of the time I'm in the office. But uh, there is some events, uh, some conferences uh, I do also. So I don't have a typical day. <laughs> Same to me as a research program manager, there isn't really a typical day. I can be out in the field collecting data or climbing trees, or I can be in the office processing data, writing protocols, um, carrying out administrative tasks, um, managing partnerships, managing volunteers, managing employees, and so on. <laughs> yeah. No typical day. We, are, we have a lot of variety tasks, both of us. Um, that's why we like the job also. Yeah, very diverse uh, roles within your duties. And um, so, do you have a favorite part of your role? Um, to me, I really enjoy uh, the diversity of my responsibilities. It's very stimulating and instructive at the same time. I'm learning a lot and I'm eager to improve my own knowledge and skills. And I'm so very grateful uh, for my role. I'm very lucky to be one of the people studying the Binturong in the world. And I really enjoy the field work. Um, there's a peace of mind there in the forest that I only can find when I'm in the field. And that's quite the same for me. I really enjoy the, the diversity of tasks and also that makes me able to meet uh, amazing people. So yeah, I learn every day. It's, uh, that's really, really exciting. So what advice would you give to someone maybe looking to pursue a career that would involve moving to a different country or continent? First, I will tell them to, to ask themselves what they want and what they don't want. The pain. <laughs> Sorry for the pain. So I tell them to think about the financial side and the stable life because it's very complicated to have a stable life in conservation. But if they want to do it, well, just uh, 
do it. Go uh, there to contact uh, professionals, there to contact uh, people working in conservation, there to go abroad, because it's the uh, only way to get knowledge. Yeah, if this is your dream or your passion, never give it up and do your best. Do your best, get as much as experiences as you can, and you'll make your way. Some very wise advice there. Um, so, knowing what you know now, um, would there be any other maybe species in in the Philippines that you'd maybe look to get involved with while you're out there? Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of endemic and threatened species here in Palawan. It's really a good spot for biodiversity. So um, about the local species, I would really love to get involved more with the Palawan pangolin, which is uh, critically endangered. And this is also quite a good marine biodiversity with uh, whale sharks um, and other species of sharks that I would love to discover and get involved with. Yeah, it sounds like some really exciting species out there. And um, so that kind of gives us a, a lovely insight into you, both of your careers and, and your journeys there. So we're just going to finish the conversation today up with some quick fire questions and um, just to have a little, little bit of fun. And um, so there are any dream species that you'd love to see in the wild? For me, it's uh, been too long because uh, I only saw them uh, in enclosure for the moment. So I really want to see one in wild. And also in my favorite species, uh, there is a snow leopard. So maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd love to see everything. <laughs> I'll yeah. see. I, if I have to see three, Outside of Pinterong, I see snow leopard, Malayan tiger, and killer whale. Killer fantastic. whale. Yeah, fantastic answers. And what is your favorite <laughs> thing about living in the Philippines? Mm, it's uh, like the freedom. So we can go outside uh, on the scooter and just uh, visit uh, the country. There is a beautiful landscape. Uh, there is a mountain and the Everything is so beautiful, so this, this is my favorite part. Same. But only the dream I learned uh, where life is good and the landscape is really amazing. Forest, mountain ranges, white sand, and clear blue sea. Really, really cool. Uh, when you're both not working, how do you keep busy? Um, there is a lot of things to do. Um, I love. Uh, well, I also love to read, to write, to draw, to to go outside, to do a hike, uh, to do hiking, uh, and also to do some uh, sports. And in Philippines, I discover uh, martial arts, so I really enjoy practice that. On my side, lately, I've been doing a lot of road trips using my dirt bike, motor bike. So going on trails, exploring the island, um, exploring beautiful places that um, not a lot of people get the chance to see. Awesome. So how can our listeners keep up to date with your work? Um, they can follow us on social media. Facebook, Instagram, at AD Conservation. We also have LinkedIn and um, website. So people can follow us there. They can also contact us by email because your we are, our emails are on the website. So for everyone that wants to know more or to get involved, you can just email us. And we have also a newsletter. Mm -hmm. So with the people give uh, their contact, uh, we can send them all the news about the association. Every three months. Wonderful. And, and what is one thing you think our listeners should take away from today's episode? Um, so that uh, every species, like the binturong, even their little nose, uh, they are really special and unique. And all the species deserve to be known and uh, to be protected. 
Yeah, I'd say that the world is still full of mysterious animals, either small or big. And then awareness raising activities are a good complement to our research program. So please spread the word about Binturong and also about World Binturong Day coming up May 11th. Join us in celebrating this day. And if you want to get involved, um, just contact us. Uh, yeah, contact us. Fantastic. And with that, that does bring our conversation to an end. So a massive shout out to both of you uh, for, for joining the podcast with your incredible knowledge and, and passion for, for Binturong converse, uh, conservation. Um, so yeah, we wish you all the support in your career. We'll certainly uh, keep an eye on, on any Binturong developments and, and obviously the work of, of AB Conservation. Uh, so yeah, Ameline and, and Alia, thank you so much for, for your time on the podcast today. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for your invitation. It was a pleasure. Thank you for tuning in today. If the Binturong episode has caught your interest, show your support by liking, sharing and reviewing the podcast. Help us expand our wildlife community and create more exciting episodes for you. Feel free to send in your questions, suggest species for future highlights or share your Binturong photos and videos on Instagram or by email. I've been your host, Johnny Bloxham, signing off for another amazing episode of the Conservationist Assembled podcast. Until next time.